Here we go. Welcome to Planet Grape Wine Review. I'm here with Catherine Fallis, Master Sommelier, who's the founder of Planet Grape Wine Review, and I'm Deborah Parker Wong. I'm global editor for Song Journal and a panelist at the Wine Review. We're here today with Chef Nate Norris, Chef de Cuisine at Zuni Cafe. And Chef Nate is here to talk with us about California olive oils. Catherine Fallis is going to ask some, some questions about the really vital role that these oils play in the California cuisine at Zumi Cafe. It's so great you could join us today. Chef Nate, thank you for coming up and Hi. Uh, You're spending welcome. a little time with us. You're welcome. It's a nice pleasure to be here. Thank you. Great. And I, I'm really curious um, uh, to talk to you about olive oil. Um, what do you look for in when you're selecting olive oil for a, a restaurant? Uh, generally, I look for an olive oil that's uh, well balanced. I look for uh, oils that balance uh, fruitiness, bitterness, pungency, uh, which are the main tasting components of an extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. uh, and I look for variation within the oils because they have different uh, uses on the menu and different pairings based upon uh, those tasting features. Mm. And so uh, we're showing uh, the COOC uh, slide that refers to fruitiness, bitterness, and pungency. And um, do you think that's a good kind of guide? It, it's, it seems like that's exactly what you said. Those three things are the components you look for? Absolutely, those are the three things you're tasting for when you taste olive oil. And it, uh, I think it takes some learning for folks at first as they're working through uh, as a beginner olive oil taster and thinking through it critically. But this is the framework that's really well recognized throughout the world mm -hmm. um, in tasting oil. So it's important, I think, to kind of learn these fundamentals a little bit uh, so you can apply apply some of the tasting notes to so it's conditions a, and usage. It's a good kind of framework for, for yeah. those that are not experts like a you. Absolutely. It takes a little learning at first, but it is a very good framework. So we are tasting three of your top picks today. Uh, and um, uh, how do you taste uh, olive oil when considering one for your restaurant? Uh, so uh, when you're tasting olive oil uh, in and of itself, there's a, there's a process we go through uh, that's not dissimilar to wine tasting where there's, there's some sniffing and swirling and, and tasting, uh, which it can be helpful uh, for somebody who has a very kind of trained and practiced palate. Uh, and it, take, it takes some time, I think, to have that feel really applicable mm -hmm. uh, to putting uh, oils on the menu. So in addition to that, I really like to taste oils in context at the same time. So okay. I will do a tasting of the oil on its own, but also try and put some things in context. I generally like to taste things with some, some meat, some cheese, some fruit, some vegetable, all in, in, in all separately to kind of see, uh, get a sense of how it plays, it, it could play in a dish. So uh, instead of, uh, you taste it straight in the analytical, uh, scientific way, and then you taste it on the different components that you're considering as far as the dish you're creating, it sounds like. Yeah, right? absolutely. So I won't necessarily do a complete dish, but mm -hmm. I make a little slice of ham and mm -hmm. a little slice of cheese, a slice of whatever seasonal fruit and vegetable we may have on hand, and that and then that will help uh, kind of guide further contextualization in, uh, mm -hmm. in dishes for the menu. I like that. I think we should try that right now. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, and do you prefer Italian, American, Spanish? Uh, it, generally speaking, I don't have a preference on based on country of origin mm -hmm. or place of origin. Um, at, at Zuni, we really focus on on local cuisine, particularly uh, California foods that we can find within 150 miles or so of the yes. restaurant. And we're really blessed here in the Bay Area to be we able to do that Bay. quite easily. And the California olive oil uh, business and uh, producers have just been really exploding over the last decade. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were. We're just getting more better and better olive oils, and so I think we've had some of the best uh, that I've had this year uh, to showcase. Great. So when we talk about wine, we talk about the varieties or the cultivars, the cultivated variety. Is this important for olives as well? It is, and in, in a very similar way, uh, you know, an Arbicana olive is going to have similar characteristics, whether it's from a Spanish Arbicana or a California Arbicana. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, just as a Pinot Noir grape would have similar characteristics. Um, but there will also be differences based on uh, the ripeness of harvest and the, the ground that it's grown in and the growing conditions of a given season. Uh, and, and then also how, how the oil is produced. How is it filtered? To what extent is it filtered? How 
Uh, is it is it a oleo nuovo? Is it just fresh, uh, straight from the mill, or has this been uh, sitting for three months? And all those things will uh, play into how the oil oil reads. But absolutely, the cultivars are are a really good uh, starting point. Something you can look at uh, on a bottle of oil and get a sense of, of what you might be working with. Okay, and so uh, Frontolio seems to be a popular one. It comes from Tuscany. Uh, yes. Is that a popular for any particular character? Uh, the Frantoyo olives uh, are, are a very popular olive for olive oil. I think they make a very balanced and a relatively mild oil. Um, the, it's not um, it's not the, the most uh, strong oil mm -hmm. that, that it produces, and it's it you can find it to be very versatile. Mm. I think uh, I, when I think of kind of introducing people to extra virgin olive oil in the critical way that we're talking about, I think the place I like to start is a place where a really balanced and elegant and versatile oils. And from there, kind of going to things that are a little more strong and forward, which can be um, very fun and exciting to use on a menu, okay. but it can be challenging uh, as a starting place. Okay, well, since you're an expert, we're starting with the more challenging varieties. We're going to start with a couple of Sicilian varieties with our first olive oil, and then we'll move to uh, the next two. The last one actually is the front, front oil variety, as you know. So we're doing it in reverse order, but you can handle that because you're an expert, right? That's fine. I, I, awesome. We're starting with a, with a very <laughs> nice, versatile oil, one of, one of everyone's favorites in California this year. Great. So are you ready to taste? Absolutely. Awesome. All right. I just like to warm up uh, the cup when we're doing a formal tasting. Uh, when we're doing a formal tasting to, to warm up the oil, depending on the room temperature. It's a, it's a slightly cool room temperature in here. So uh, just as with anything, when it's an elevated temperature, the aromas and the flavor will be heightened. Um, you certainly don't want to heat it up, but I just use the base of my hand, kind of warm it up and give it a little swirl. Allow some of the uh, aromas to start to produce and we have a little cover cover in here. You can see my little olive oil cup here. And Is that a special cup? So yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Thank you. So it's blue and we, in olive oil tasting, we mask the color of the olive oil during tasting because color has uh, little to no impact whatsoever in, uh, in the olive oil flavors and aroma characteristics. So we don't like to be influenced to say like a pale oil maybe is less is, is less fresh versus a green oil, which is bright and vibrant. The color really doesn't impact those flavor, flavor and aroma, aromatic attributes. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a sniff here. And you think you wanna note the, the intensity of the aroma, what are the things that you're smelling? And, and I would say just as with wine tasting, you, this is, there's not right or wrong answers here. There's things that you're looking for and there's a lot of learning that can happen in the process. So just think of it and think of things that come to mind for you uh, when you taste it and make, make notes and, and then move on from there. So we'll go back, we'll sniff and we'll take a small sip. And we'll uh, slurp a bit. What does the slurp <coughs> actually do, Nate? So we're it emulsifies the oil more than oil. We're aerating it on the on the palate, so mm -hmm. we're working to get uh, to oxygenate the oil as mm -hmm. it passes across mm -hmm. uh, your palate mm -hmm. and your taste buds, and so uh, the the oxygen help helps to bring the 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 phenol, the polyphenols, and other. Uh, aromatic attributes. Mm -hmm. The volatile aroma compounds, right? Yes. It really helps exactly. them kind of bring those out, right? Okay, so this is the Bondolio. Yes. Uh, this is the Bondolio oil. It's uh, a blend of three cultivars, uh, Biancolila, right? Cherisola, and uh, Nocellara. That's right. right. Absolutely. Those three different uh, beautiful um, a cultivars of olives that have a common thread of bitterness that run through them, but they're each different, right? They are each different. This is an oil that's uh, modeled off Sicilian oil uh, from a producer called Titone, and Titone makes a, a very consistently delicious olive oil, and uh, Karen and Malcolm Bond uh, produced this oil uh, in Bondolio with, with 
with these olive cultivars that try and not necessarily mimic it, but find a, a similar uh, grace and kind of elegance that's found in the Tatone olive oil. And so that while the Bondolio has those, uh, that parallel, uh, it's used in a different ratio of blend and it has a, a different end place, but it is a very balanced and elegant olive oil. Delicious. All right, so we're going to go on to oil number two. Oil number two is the fat gold, and that mm -hmm. already sounds different. Mm. This is going to be big and robust. Peppery. Peppery. Okay, as the tasting note says here, uh, well, the tasting note says delicate and silky with notes of lemon, verbena, dill, oregano, and orange blossom, but there's is there a little more punch there? there is there more there's, pungency? There's definitely going to be more pungency right. uh, with, with these. So are you these. saying my tasting note is wrong? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand how it can be delicate. It's delicate and silky on the palate. That's the yes, texture to me of the is. oil. But that maybe the flavors are a little more pronounced. Yeah, I, fi I find that I can use this oil with uh, more heavily flavored other ingredients, more, more, spice, in, more spice ingredients and stronger flavors. So here we go. Yes, you, you get you get the nice herbal notes, you get you get some of the olive fruit in there as well. Nice pepperiness and pungency in the end. All right. So my note says that this particular olive grove is planted as six different cultivars, but it's not indicated. Could you could you tell which cultivar is dominant by tasting the oil? Or do you think, you know, could you say it's Tuscan or Sicilian or is it Spanish or? I, um, uh, for me, those are not things that come into play so much as a chef and they're not things that I look at. They, um, they, can, they can be helpful when trying to make decisions. I really make my decisions based off of tasting and uh, tasting like this, but also tasting in context and finding uh, pairings that work in unique ways uh, that to really showcase the, the oil. Right, and I like the fact that Fat Gold, uh, while the farm is in Sunol in Alameda County, they operate um, in, uh, in Oakland down by the train tracks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, urban, urban, right? This yeah. product is, is typically, it's only for consumer uh, by, um, uh, by subscription, but uh, they, Catherine does make uh, some available to folks like you, Chef Nate, yeah, to Kat the trade, but you have to ask for the gold labels. Or... Yeah, there, well, there's two labels. There's a, there's a blue label and the gold label. The gold label does get some retail distribution as well as through their mail order and the wholesale. And the blue label is a different, uh, different varietals. And that is a, that's a much more limited because they don't have as much uh, olive product that they harvest for that oil. And I believe that's only available through the subscription. So oil number three, the Frantoyo. Here we go, Frantoyo Grove. This particular grove is 30 acres of olive uh, trees planted in 2005. So these trees are still quite young, right? In the terms of yeah. the age of yeah. olive trees, right? Yeah, and I like this one. It leads, it leads with a lot of olive fruit. And uh, when you talk about fruitiness in olive oil, we're not talking about does it taste like pineapples. We're talking, can you taste the fruit of the olive, the, the olive flavor, that, that ripe, ripeness, and, and the Frantoyo grows these nicely with a lot of that. This, is in, this grove is in Santa Clara County, so it's warm down there. Um, the Frantoyo is said to have artichoke leaf, cut grass, a green almond, and cinnamon notes. It really finishes with a nice cinnamon note. Uh, on, on the palate is that there's that pepperiness, but also the warm spice flavor that you get with cinnamon. What kind of dish would you use this? This is a very this is a very balanced, and this is your introductory oil, as you said. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. would you dress a salad in this, or would you showcase this on a salad, or would you use it to actually saute something, or how would you? Generally, none of these oils I like to to heat very much at all. I would use it to finish up a pasta. Um, I like to use it, especially this time of year when you're starting to get a lot of uh, new olive oils available. You can have um, an artichoke as a really nice thing to, to pair an oil with like this with. It, it pairs very okay, nicely. well, we're going to uh, put the kibosh on our screen share here and 
let's wrap it up. So to continue that uh, that on, on that vein, so uh, Deborah was asking you about you know how we use these oils. So there is a to me when I was tasting these and writing the reviews, there was some sense of delicacy all around and not. Uh, I'm not I'm not an olive oil expert um, by any stretch, but I did find a delicacy. Maybe the fact that they were so fresh, maybe mm -hmm. they were so close to harvest that gave them. I know for you, you know, some of them are very bold and pungent and peppery, but I was finding uh, more quiet, subtle messages, um, which makes sense that you would use them as a dressing on the pasta, as a finishing touch. Mm -hmm. um, is that what you think you should do with all of, with this category of olive oil? Or? Uh, not, not necessarily. I, for, for me, in the context of the ones we've tasted here, I really like to put um, the fat gold. Mm -hmm. uh, I find pairs well with bigger flavor. Okay. Um, things with more acidity, more spice. Mm -hmm. Um, and both the Frantoyo and the Bondolio are more versatile, mm -hmm. um, but they show off better with more muted flavors. Uh -huh. um, I like to pair them with other rich things. I find that I pair the Bondolio frequently uh, with rich, creamy soups. That you, this time of year, um, in the winter, we're making a lot of uh, soups with with really kind of warm, sweet winter vegetables uh -huh. and with purees and, mm -hmm. and nice kind of creamy soups. And then lend themselves with a show off with a lot of sweetness mm -hmm. and that dairy richness, and then uh, the kind of elegance, but the pepperiness and the the nice olive fruit flavors and the oils can play really well with uh, things like that. Would um, you do your Zuni burger with with the bun on the side and a drizzle of <laughs> I, I, the famous I, Zuni burger? I I I would. I don't know if any one of these oils would show. They wouldn't be bad in that way, but mm -hmm. there are some oils uh, that we use that are very bitter and very pungent up front. And I find those types of oils show off really well with meat, mm -hmm. especially red meat or with, with, with a ham, a prosciutto, mm -hmm. other pieces of charcuterie. Uh, the, the bitterness and the pungency uh, kind of can take a back seat and you, you uh, can really taste the olive oil, I think, a lot more through that. I think sometimes uh, for people in the past, the bitterness is a, mm -hmm. is a hard flavor note to work through. It's with the same with wine. Many Italian wines are very bitter, and a lot of folks find that bitterness unappealing. Oh, Amarone named the bit bitter, <laughs> yeah. so that would be one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's finding a way to put that bitterness in a context mm -hmm. that, that people enjoy, and I, I really like to find ways to make that transformation. I think that's, for me, one of the most exciting parts about it. Um, and so talking to the chefs out there, it, what's one of your slam dunk pairings that you've liked with, with uh, one of these oils, uh, well, a specific dish on your menu. Yeah, so on the menu, I, I like to, what I really like to do is get people excited about the oil, get the customer, get the service staff excited about it. Um, so I make fairly accessible dishes, dishes that will maybe antipasta plates with fruit, mm. uh, very um, focused. We'll, we'll have goat cheese and persimmons or we'll have, uh, oh, after persimmons so finish up, we'll, we'll move into citrus. And those are dishes that are generally very popular and I kind of lead the description. It's about the fruit and maybe there's nuts or cheese, herbs, mm -hmm. other things that would go with it. Mm -hmm. But I'll douse it in these olive oils and I'll find ones that I like. <laughs> and and uh, what I tell the service staff is that, you know, they're buying it for the persimmons and the goat cheese, but what they're going to walk away with is that olive oil is amazing. Yes. So this is a great uh, point for staff training when you have a new oil and you want to um, uh, get the staff involved, the servers involved, you know, say what you just said, you know, so I, do you recommend other chefs to talk to their staff about this, about, you know, the impact that the oil has, it can really transform what they thought they were going to have. And they leave with this beautiful taste of olive oil, this lingering fresh olive oil taste in their, on their palate. I, I think in, in the nature of what, what we do in, in, in cooking fairly rustic California cuisine, there's not a lot of new stones to turn over. And I think olive oil is an area where there still remains to be a lot of learning and growth for mm -hmm. the chef as well as the consumer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where some of that excitement comes across. The wow I, factor. That, that wow factor yeah. of, I didn't know that the olive oil could be so critical and right. just show off and be, you know, you're not leading necessarily with olive oil, but you find a way to get the consumer um, excited about a dish and ordering it and then and then walking out saying, 
Well, where, where can I get that olive oil? <laughs> well, you can find these olive oils. We provided the information for you, wholesalers, uh, etc. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for being here with us today. Thank you, Deborah, for joining in. And, you bet. and uh, we wanted to also thank, of course, Roberta, Roberta Klukman, who provided the olive oil samples and the lovely glasses for us today. So thank you very much. Great. Thank cheers. you. My hey, pleasure. Cheers. Cheers.